Welcome back to Waiting in Laodicea. I'm your host, A.T. Martinez. Today I want you, today we're going to be finalizing our discussion of standing up. I know it's been a little, kind of an adventure getting here, but we're going to go on even further of an adventure. I want you all to take a moment and sit back and think about something. I want you to close your eyes and pretend you're standing in front of the Sanhedrin, the leaders of the Jewish church and seated with you is the high priest a man who is supposedly ordained by God to come forth and be present in front of God himself now I understand that in the Jewish religion only the Levites were allowed to be in inside the intersection of the temple and only the high priest the high priest alone was allowed to go in front of the Holy of Holies was actually divided off from the rest of the section of the center of the church by a giant veil. And when he went in front of, in there, they had bells attached to him, uh, to his robe, so they could hear that he was still moving. That way, if he did, if he'd stop moving, they would drag him out. Because they were, they knew that, you know, sometimes God gets, gets mad, and so they would pull this, this man out. Now this is a man who was supposed to be pure, you know, be pure. There's just no way around it. He was supposed to have followed the rules correctly, because if he didn't, he took his life in his hands by walking into that section section of the temple. And so you're going to sit now, going back to our analogy, our view. You're sitting there, and all of these people are looking at you and saying, questioning you. Now think back to the cru crucifixion story of Christ. He was brought by the soldiers to the high priest. He was questioned by the high priest over doctrine, over beliefs. Now he knew, and everybody else knew at that time, that if he ch gave the wrong answers, he was to be executed. That somehow or another, the Jewish, the, the Jewish priests would have him executed. Now Christ knew this going in, and yet, instead of saying, nope, everything's cool, man, backing down, he stood by his beliefs and his knowledge in the doctrines. Now, yes, we know where that led to. It led to him walking down the Via Della Rosa and being executed for our beliefs, being executed for our sins. But I want you to think about something. The people that condemned him, I mean, the high priest, this was not the high priest, the Sanhedrin, the scribes, the Pharisees, all of these people and these organizations didn't start out as evil. They started out as godly men. They were trying to make maintain the beliefs of their of their people. So what happened? Well, number one, most of them put the letter of the law above the spirit of the law. They found ways to get around. They thought what God was saying to do. The letter of the law never supersedes the spirit of the law. But they thought this did. They thought they could find ways to cheat and to amass power. So, when Christ went before them, he knew he had a choice. He could stand up for his beliefs and stand up for what is right and wrong, or he could surrender and give in. Now, Christ chose to stand up. And that standing up led to the cross. When we stand up for the Lord, sometimes there's some severe consequences. Now, as I've been talking through this series, I've been talking about how our, how the churches have allowed their beliefs to be altered to appease the masses. And all of this has been heading towards the question of 
what are you going to do when it comes time to stand up? Now, some of you are going to sit back and go, oh, this is not going to happen in my life. No one's going to make me stand up and pick a side. But they do every day. Every day, when you're out and around, dealing with others, and mixing in society, you're being asked to make a choice. It could be something as little as going to a club with your friends. It could be something as big as joining others and condemning something. We are called upon every day to choose our side, to pick up our cross daily. And as we move further into the end of times, you're going to be called on regularly to stand up for your beliefs. Now, I've divided this standing up into three sections. The first one, First one, well, we all know about the first one. That's, that's between your friends and family. How to stand up against them whenever they're saying one thing, and you know the Bible says another. I mean, a lot of people are afraid to stand up and tell their friends, no, nah, I'm sorry, I don't go out and get drunk. No, I'm not going to go that, you know, to that strip club with you because that's not how I want to see things. That's not part of my beliefs. No, I'm not going to get high with you. No, I'm not going to go with you and rob a bank. Now, the last one might make you laugh, but the reality is some people are being asked to do things that are illegal. So the question is, are you prepared? Because we all know that peer, peer pressure is very, very powerful. And there's a danger when you stand up for the Lord and losing your friends. Your friends may look at you and go, you, I'm sorry, man, you're, you, you're too out there for me. But I'm going to ask you a question. If they're prepared to stop being your friends over you standing up for what you believe, were they really your friends in the first place? Whether they were or were not, being seen as a nut for following the Lord is better than being wishy-washy in your beliefs. Bottom line is better to be alone and following Christ than being a group following Satan. Because it really does come down simply to that. You either are following Christ or you're following Satan. There's no in-between. Everybody who tells you anything different is lying. They're doing what Satan wants you to do. They want Satan wants you to think that there's multiple ways that you can be safe. No. You're either with God or you're against him. There's no gray zone. There's no fence, sitting on the fence. You know, when you sit on the fence you get you get poked. And bottom line, if you sit back and you think that, well, I don't know, so I'm not going to make a decision, you have made a decision. You've decided to allow something to continue. When we stand up to our friends and family, we risk being ostracized. We risk being the black sheep. You, you risk losing your friends. And that's a difficult choice to make sometimes. But the reality is we either have to make the right choice or we will suffer. Now, the second one is not one that most people think about. How do you stand up for your beliefs to your church? Imagine if you're in a church and they suddenly decide that it's acceptable to, to perform a same-sex marriage. Now, we know the Bible flat out says homosexuality is considered a perversion before the Lord. If this is true, and the Bible says it, should we, well, it's just they love each other. So, let's just go along to get along. Now, that's an extreme example, but it's one that's coming. The question is, 
How do you stand up? I mean, there's a lot of reasons why you'd want want not to. Number one, there's the fear of being wrong. What if your view is wrong? Well, the answer to that, first off, is make sure you know what you're talking about. Look in the Bible, see what it says. Is it explicit? Does it say that, you know, same-sex marriage is, is wrong? If it does, then you're not wrong. You need to stand up for your beliefs. The second problem people have is fear of seeming rude or like a know-it-all. I mean, come on, you're going to tell your preacher? No, I'm sorry, that's not acceptable. That's not what the Bible says. I mean, how presumptuous of you is it, can you be, to tell a preacher he doesn't know what the Bible says? I mean, this is somebody who, you know, he went to school to study this. And you think you know better? Well, the problem isn't who knows better. It's who's following what's supposed, what it says. You got to be prepared that whenever the Bible says something flat out, that you have to go along with it. Even if that means challenging your preacher or the elders of your church. When they make their choice, they're choosing not just for themselves but for you. And if this is what's if they're going to choose something that's non-biblical, well, you got to let them know that's not right. You have to stand up for the Lord. You have to stand up for your beliefs. If you don't, then your church begins teaching heresy. And you have already agreed to take the first steps towards betraying Christ. And like I pointed out, you take a little bit at a time, and eventually you find out your church is no longer a Christian church. Your church is now a church of Satan. A synagogue of Satan, as, as is the phrase is used in the Bible. So, the third thing that people are afraid of when it comes to challenging their church is if you challenge your church, you might get kicked out. Then you might find yourself alone. You've lost your friends that are in the church because they think you're a nut job. Because, how dare, I mean, come on. So it's just a lit, it's this. The Bible says it's wrong, but it's just a little thing. It's not worth losing everybody over. It's not worth being ostracized and treated like a pariah, is it? Well, is it? Is Christ worth being treated as a pariah? The Bible gives us the answers. Sometimes it's not easy to follow Christ. But Christ warns you, you are going to be hated and persecuted in his name. And if your church chooses to take the steps to stop following him, you can't just go along to get along. Because then you're just marching along with the wrong side. The final institution or a group that it's hard to, to stand up against is the world itself. Now this is one that you should have already been advised of and warned of. And as a long-term Christian, you should have seen this for all your life. The world does not support our beliefs. We are not of the world, is what the Bible tells us. We need to be not of the world, but of the Lord. But when you do this, there's a price. Right now, it's really easy. If you stand up for Christ, you're liable to get insulted. You're going to get called Jesus freak, nut jobs. They're going to take and throw words like racist, supremacist, homophobe. I mean, the number of insults out there are, are plethora. And most of it is going to be things that don't really apply and you know you're not that's not the point the point is you're going to have to face ridicule and derision and you need to know this in advance 
if you don't already realize this, standing up for Christ comes with a price. Now that price is going to get stronger and stronger, or a bigger and a bigger price. Already, if you stand up for Christ and the beliefs in the Bible, you need to be prepared to be ostracized. They're going to cancel you. They're going to go on Facebook and Twitter and everywhere else, and if you have an account there, they're going to bash you to high heaven. If you post on those, you're liable to lose your rights to post because they're going to accuse you of hate crimes and hate speech. Not even requiring you to say anything hateful. If you just simply state marriage is between a man and a woman, you're going to get banned. Now, you don't believe me? I'm sorry, but the, the worst has already happened. Groups like this support a Christian fa family life are listed by the Southern Poverty Law Center as hate groups. Organizations that put, present this image and present to the world the idea that you know a man and a woman, one of each, raising kids is a good thing. Have already been have already lost their privileges on Facebook and Twitter. They get challenged all the time. I mean, look recently. Stephen Crowder got banned, and why did he get banned? Because he said that shoot that a cop that shot a girl that was about to stab somebody was justified. They don't need a lot of reasons to ban people. They're going to take you and they're going to kick you off. And you're going to be insulted and deri deri derided. And depending on your work, you may even lose your job. The cancel culture is prevalent, and we see this everywhere we look in today's society. They don't like us. They don't like people that tell them mor morality has a standard, and that standard is Jesus Christ. They don't like this because they look at Christ and they go, no, I can't be like him. They see their own flaws and those flaws motivate them not to try to be like Christ, but to turn away from him. Now, eventually, you're going to find yourself facing the third, third possible problem with standing up to the world. You can go to jail. In some cases, extreme cases, you may find yourself facing a death penalty. Guess what? That is today. That's not just waiting for the future to happen, but that's now. If you don't believe me, go preach the name of Christ in, in Ch communist China. You will face a death penalty. You will at least be locked up. Go preach the name of Christ in Iran or any number of other Muslim countries, and you might find yourself facing an executioner. <coughs> because you have the nerve to mention a religion that is not the state supported. Sit back and tell me, well, yeah, AT, that's true, but those are, that's not here. Really? I told you, in an earlier episode about a man in Canada who's just been arrested. He was arrested for holding sermons and holding services because society said you couldn't do it. Yeah, I know this happens to do with the CDC guidelines or the COVID situation. And that was in Canada and he held his meetings and his congregation was too large and he didn't force them to wear masks and he didn't force them to stay, you know, three feet apart and six feet apart. And you may sit back and say he asked for it. Okay, maybe he did. How about the man, the preacher in, in London that was arrested for standing in the speaker's square and talking about what the Bible says about marriage? He was arrested for hate speech. The Minister of Parliament from, I believe it was Sweden, 
or Finland, who was arrested because they because she was they were asked about gay marriage and the Bible, and she it was pointed out flat out. You know, the Bible says this. Now I'm. Sorry, I don't remember whether it was a man or a woman member. But the bottom line is they're facing possibly being arrested for hate speech. And this is a member of parliament. And the hate speech they did, the ma simply stating what the Bible says. That marriage is between a man and a woman. So, yeah, these penalties exist already. Death jail. The world has already got these ready for us. We're going back to the time when, I mean, when you look at the early church, they faced this on a regular basis. Look at how the apostles all met their, met their ends. Very few of them met their, died of old age. They were beheaded. They were crucified. They were thrown off the top of a building. The bottom line is, sometimes standing up for your beliefs and standing up for Christ can lead to you losing your life. So, how do you do this? How do you stand up for the Lord? The easiest, easiest way is simply say no. When your friends ask you to come party with them, tell them no thank you, that's... If they ask you why, tell them that well, that's not something I think is right to do. And just leave it at that. You don't have to make, make a big issue out of it. When your church starts looking at the possibility of following false doctrine, bring it up. But bring it up in a, in a polite way. Say, doesn't the Bible say this? Now, if they continue after that, then find a new church. I know that's difficult. Sometimes finding a church that fits your beliefs and makes you feel comfortable is very hard. I know it shouldn't be, but from personal experience, it can be very difficult. Okay, so you find yourself a new church. What if you can't find a church? Well, then start one. Get together with your friends, your associates from the church, and just meet by yourselves. You can get together. You don't have to have an ordained minister. You don't have to have the blessing from an organization to meet and serve God. What do you do about the world? Well, when the world comes after you about your beliefs, you be prepared. Now, in a lot of cases, the easiest thing to do is just don't get into it. But sometimes the situation is such that you have got to open your mouth. And when you do, and when you feel that calling to say something, then be prepared for the consequences. Now, I'm not saying you're supposed to sit back and condone what others are doing. No, that's directly the opposite. I am saying that when it's not your business, it's not your business. What somebody's doing on the next street over, just because they live together or they're, you know, unless what they're doing is criminal, is it your business? Do you know them? then keep, your, keep yourself out of it. You don't have to go out there and be Don Quixote charging your windmills. There's enough things in your life that you're going to have to stand up for without having to go looking for it. One of the future episodes I'm going to talk about is what are you looking for the devil for when you ought to be looking for the Lord. If you want to find evil, it's all around you. You don't have to search hard. Instead, Instead, what you need to do is start searching. I'm sorry about that, folks. I had an issue to take care of. Okay, so you're standing up for God. How do you stand up for the Lord? 
the easiest thing to do is just, A, live your life. Do what you know is right. Let your actions speak for you. Now, one thing I want to caution you about is make sure that whatever you do, you do in the name of love. Sitting there and telling your preacher or your friends or anyone else that you come in contact with that what they're doing is a sin and you're not going to be part of it. <clears throat> well, there's a, there's a nice way to do it and there's a hateful way to do it. And if you're going to use hate, then you're not standing up for your beliefs right. Being a Christian is supposed to be all about love. If your friends are going out and partying and they ask you to come with them, sitting there and insulting them and telling them, no, I'm sorry, I don't want to go to hell with you, it's not going to cut it. But remember, there's a nice way and there's a rude way. And all too often we tend to go to the rude way because we feel morally superior. We're not. They may be drinking and doing other things, but what sins do you have in your life? Remember, when Christ was asked about stoning of the harlot, what did he state? Oh well, yeah, that's what the Bible that's what the law says. But I ask you this let he who is without sin throw the first stone. When we go after people, it's too easy for it to be seen as an attack. An attack is never seen as something nice. Because face it, it's not. If you're attacking me, I don't care what you think your motivation was. You're being mean. You're hurting someone. Now, I mentioned how a lot of people change their views and are willing to change their beliefs to not hurt people. No, there's a difference there. To intentionally hurt someone, then your beliefs are wrong. If you believe that you have the right to get into somebody's face and tell them they're going to hell, you're not exactly loving them, are you? You're judging them, you're condemning them, you're violating some of the very precepts in the Bible that you supposedly stand for. You don't have to tell them they're going to hell. You have to tell them read the Bible. If they ask you, well, do you have a problem with me being a homosexual? No. That's between you and God. I love you no matter what you do. You should be using this as an opportunity to witness to them and show them how they can live their lives and follow God and not use it as an opportunity to get yourself higher, make yourself seem more important, make yourself seem more righteous. Those Pharisees and Sadducees were real good at getting up on, on their high horse and having everybody bow down and look at them to the point where he, at one point when the Pharisee or a member of the temple walked by others were expected to, to lower their heads to bow to these great men I don't want people bowing to me because I'm not a great man the only great man I know died on a cross so I didn't have to that's a great man and I'll bow my head to him Christ's life should show us how to stand up he never once backed down never once altered his beliefs he stood by what he said but he, every time he spoke he did so out of love to try to help people and it was seen by others. And that's why he had such a great reception. If you want to have a large number of people around, make sure you fill your life with love. People will flock to this. People will come. And you don't have to be hateful to show them the errors of their ways. Become their friends. Show them love. 
show them that God loves them because God loves each and every one of us regardless of what we're doing wrong. Whether you're a tax embezzler, a cheater, a thief, or a murderer, God will for forgive you. And God loves you nonetheless. One of the things I loved in God's Not, God's Not Dead, the third one, is the boy that threw the rock that started the problem with the church. He asked his girlfriend, do you think God, God will forgive me? Because knowing that his actions ended up causing somebody to die. And she looked at him and said, yeah. Because the reality is, yeah, he will. God loves us so much, he'll forgive us for anything we do. If we ask him. So when you're going to go out and you're going to stand up for your beliefs, do so with love, not with hatred. Sorry about that. We had a little technical issue. <laughs> You've got to learn to put love as the priority in your life. The love of God and let it shine through you. And when you stand up, be prepared for the consequences. But do so always with love in your heart. And this will make it worth it. This will make it to where it's hard to come out and call you a bunch of names if you're being loving. And they can see that love. Now, does that mean they're not going to call you names? Oh, no, they're not going to call you names. Does that mean that the cops aren't going to arrest you? No, they're going to arrest you. But even when they arrest you, you're being a witness for God. You could do, who knows what amazing things you could accomplish. When we were watching the God's Not Dead trilogy, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Because all three of these movies are about people that are being asked to stand up for their beliefs in everyday common situations between standing up for your beliefs at school, standing up for your beliefs at work, or standing up for your beliefs in the community. And they show, each of these ex movies shows you ways to stand up. Now, if you look at each and every one of them, not once, well, I take at one point, only the one with the, where the God's Not Dead 3, where the preacher got angry. And he apologized. He realized he was doing something. He was being wrong. Not for standing up, but for the way he stood up. That and the fact that he got mad that somebody killed his friend. But Melissa Joan Hart, she didn't go attack people. She didn't understand why they were coming after her. The student, he lost his girlfriend over it. Granted, no great loss because she was busy trying to run his life. I say that, but it's easy for me to say that because I was on the outside looking in. For him, it was a big price. And sometimes you're going to pay those prices. But every one of these people did what they did they stood up for their beliefs with love. And that's the way to do it. You don't have to be argumentative. You don't have to be insulting. You don't have to be rude. You can let love guide you. And let that be an opportunity for God to move in the crowd. And God to move in people around you. I love the fact in the first one, how many people were so taken with how this student just stood up and refused to surrender his beliefs. And did and he did such a great job of this and did so with, with respect and with love that he actually, actually was able to witness to those around him. And, hey, according to the movie, he even got that Chinese guy to be a member of the Chinese government exchange student to come to the Lord, who, if you follow the movies, later chooses to go back to China to be a missionary 
and be a preacher for Christ. See, you can take any one of these standing ups anytime your beliefs are challenged or threatened and use that as an opportunity for Christ. And that's what I'm trying to get across to you is when you stand up for the Lord, stand up with love, not with hatred. Now, in the 80s, people stood up for their beliefs, but sometimes they didn't stand up with love. All too often, we don't stand up for our beliefs with love. Instead, we come down with hatred and condemnation. In the 80s, people were shooting at abortion clinics. They felt abortion was wrong, so that it was okay to do this. No. It's never right to meet somebody with hatred. The Bible's quite clear. Everything should be done with love. And you cannot lovingly pull the trigger on someone. I loved you, so I shot you? No. It's not. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, unless we're talking like some sick weirdo song, this is not going to play off well in the real world. I loved you, so I stood out in front of your front of your business and prayed that people would see the errors of their way yeah you can do that and guess what when you do you may be insulted you may you may face derision you may be ridiculed hated blasted on twitter destroyed on facebook be prepared for the consequences but as you think about that, and as you start looking at those consequences, remember the other side. The other side is very simple. If you do not stand up for God, he's not going to stand up for you. How many people are going to come into the end of, end of the world and go before the Lord, and the Lord's going to say, Who are you? I'm sorry, I don't have your name in my book. Oh, you chose to follow the other side sorry but I don't know you the price on the other side is more than I'm willing to pay you want to ostracize me today you want to cancel me you want to kill me I'd rather face those prices than face eternity without Christ so as we in closing I want to read to you something from a song that I heard back as a kid. It got to me because it's so true. The song states subdivisions in the high school halls in the shopping malls can form or be cast out. Subdivisions in the basement bars in the backs of cars be cool or be cast out. Obviously, the name of the song is Subdivisions. It's a song by Rush. But just those right there in that chorus, what they're telling you is society expects you to conform or they will cast you out. And it can be in the way you walk and the way you act at school, going out shopping, the way you do, what you do on your regular life, everything up to going to bars and and we know what happens in backs of cars. You either do what you're supposed to do, as society sees it, or be cast out. Well, if those are my choices, cast me out. I'd rather be a cast out with, a cast out with Christ than the most popular of people. It's not easy. And, it's, and I'll be honest, I know as I'm sitting here telling you this, it's easy for me to say this to you on this video. But it's going to be a whole lot harder when they come at me, come, come to my door with guns. Hopefully I won't be behind the door anymore. I'll, I've already moved on because I was smart enough and wise enough and God had provided me with the wisdom to realize it was time to get out. See, part of being prepared is to know when it's time to move on. And 
but that's a whole other whole other message bottom line when you are daily asked to stand up for your beliefs are you gonna make a stand or are you gonna cave remember at first it seemed it's just a little thing but those little things add up and next thing you know you got a wall built between you and God so you need to stand up stand up for the Lord in all that you do trust in the Lord with all of your heart and he'll take care of you all right I hope you enjoyed our bigger episode this week I know it got kind of twisted and, and went through a lot more steps than I thought it was going to but that's just the way it was I was led to go with it a lot of times I make simple notes but God's the one that tries to give me the message sometimes I actually hear him I try my best and I hope you enjoyed today's message if you did hit that like button please share it with your friends your neighbors others let everybody know that you support the idea of Christ and that maybe this this show will help you see ways to do so. Furthermore, please, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. Remember, I'm looking forward to the day we hit a thousand subscribers because then, hey, I can go live. We can do an evening message. Maybe we'll find a way to watch a movie together. I don't know. We'll see what we can come up with. The point is, options grow with a thousand subscribers. Whether that a thousand is on BitChute or on YouTube, we need a thousand on each so that we can really start moving forward. The other thing that does, and yes, I'm going to be honest, there's money involved, but by clicking that subscribe, you can support this channel without having to spend a dime. I'm not costing you anything. But by simply subscribing and getting others to subscribe, you can actually help this ministry make money off these videos. And that money would be used to actually help grow this ministry. I'm not think, looking to buy myself a Porsche. No, I wouldn't want one. I'd be too tempted to speed and get arrested. So the point is, this is an easy way to support the channel. Other things that we you could do, if you want to support this channel more, you can actually donate through this through the page, whether that is BitChute or YouTube or in the future on Odyssey or others. Just go ahead and donate through there. Last but not least, you can look on the, in the channel in the description of this episode, and you'll see a listing of several different ways you can donate. You can find information on becoming a patron in our channel description. So, there are ways to, su to support us. And if none of that feels like the way you're being led to go, then email me. Maybe, you're out, maybe you want a more active part. Maybe you want to be the person who transcribes all this so we can put out transcripts. Hey, I'm all for that. You let, email me. The email's right there in the, ch in the uh, episode description, and we'll talk. Now, that email is also there for another reason. If you have problems, if you just need, if you've got this desire that you need someone to talk to, or that you're bored and you're lonely, email me. I'll be glad to talk to you. This is a ministry, so I am here to help you. If you are curious about things, email me. If, you, if I'm saying something wrong, definitely email me. If I made a mistake, I want to see it. So I can correct it. And if you see that mistake, let me know. Now, let me know according to the Bible. You disagree with something I say, well, if it's in the Bible, then I'm going to go with what the Bible says. Now, if I'm interpreting something wrong in the Bible, give me your interpretation. And depending on what it is, we'll, I'll have a, we'll do an episode on the differences. We each have different interpretations, and there are some things that that's okay. For example, when is the rapture? I don't know, but I wouldn't prepare either way. So, in conclusion, I hope you all have a wonderful day.